You know, I don't get to do much open water pan fishing these days, but that's what I grew up on. Hi, I'm Larry Ladowski with Midwest Outdoors, and I used to pond hop with my brother on various Saturdays throughout the year a lot when I was growing up. That's how a lot of people got introduced to fishing and a lot of kids get introduced to fishing. So today I'm gonna to do a little pan fishing with Tom Shire, owner of Chena Bait, and we're gonna go back in history and do a little nostalgia fishing. So you moved down the shore, a secret spot, huh? I sure did. You know, Tom, I don't know about you, but when I grew up, you know, we didn't know about slip bobbers, so it was the red and white bobbers and but there's definite advantages to slip bobber, especially if you're fishing from shore. We used to tie the cardboard match in a loop, and that was our bobber stop. Well, they've definitely come a long way since then. That's old school. <laughs> I'll show you in a minute. Get rid of that guy. You've got a bobber stop right here. That goes on your main line. So if you're fishing shallower, you just move it down. If you're fishing deeper, you just set that up. The slip bobber then will move as deep as that bobber stop is set. And then to our main fluorocarbon line. And all we're using is a little weight and a hook with some chena bait attached to it. Got a fish on. Yep. Great. I love the way they swim horizontal. Whoa, that's a monster. Monster nice bluegill. And I got one on too, we got a double. Just we're able to add a little bit more chena bait to it. So refreshing it is a good idea. Just had to refresh the chena bait a little bit. Nice monster, though. The reason why slip bobber fishing is, is so enjoyable, I guess, is, is because it's a relatively easy thing to learn. Uh, but there is a technique to it as well. But it's great for teaching kids Got when you're using very minimalistic equipment. Beautiful. And what a lot of people don't understand, Tom, too, is that when you're fishing with a slip bobber or any kind of rig, is keeping pressure on that fish. Let the rod do the work. We're using six and a half foot medium light action rods. That rod tip is so flexible and that's so it can fight the fish. So as long as you keep the pressure on, you're gonna land a lot more fish in the long run. There's a go, there we go. Oh man, holy cow. Emphasis on the cow. Wow, I can lip this one. Wow, look at that. Nice fish, Monster. Larry. Monster. We got a fish on and the way it's swirling, it's gonna be a bluegill. It ain't real big, I don't think, but it is a bluegill. This is what we're after, Larry. Now we got him eight and a half inches. And again, the chena bait, and he didn't take it off. Larry today is using the slip bobber, but I'm choosing to use what they call the rocket bobber. We have a yellow top. The yellow top is better for me on cloudy days, and then we can switch over to the orange top on bright days. You'll be able to see it on top of the shimmering water a lot better. All you see is that bobber turn, and <laughs> then there's a fish on it. And sure enough, look at that. Now we're approaching the 10 inch, if not longer, and using this light line, it's another habit not to pick the fish up with the pole. You grab the line itself, because if you have any burrs on your eyelids of your pole, it's gonna cut this line. Larry, here's an example of a 10 inch fish biting on the chena bait. Now that's a nice fish. I'm gonna put some fresh chena on, but we'll show you how we do it. It comes in a one by three inch piece. It's all rolled up. You unroll it, and then what I like to do is just take a scissors, and just take off that little piece, and that's all you need, is that little strip right there will last you about 25 to 30, maybe even more. And if you wanna keep it longer, just keep it in a cool place, and it'll last you the whole season. And all you do is you take your hook, put it in the end, so it trails off like that, and it's very fluid. It looks like a little minnow swimming or else a little bug that panfish just love. Larry, we got another one on. Tom, you're on fire. You look at that rod tip. He's a nice fish. Taking drag out now. Beautiful one. You know, Tom, one of the nice things about bluegill fishing is they really are all over the country, and you can do it anywhere, right? Yes, my little 
bucket list is to go get them two and three pounders down south. <laughs> I've already got them two pounds. I want them bigger. Got another big one on, Larry. Nice. Let's took, see him. I took the bobber off and just. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Re retrieving it. That is dragging it on one. the bottom. Bring him on up. I'm going to have to bend over because this four pound <laughs> line will break. Come on up, baby. Yeah, you just grab the line. Look at that. And that's why you go hopping on these little lakes. Because bluegill are all over the country and they're a lot of fun to catch and we don't necessarily get to do that very often, do we, Tom? No, we do not. <laughs> I want to thank Tom Shire for joining us from Cheetah Bait. And if you want more information, just check out the website below and go catch some fish. I'm Larry Ladowski for Midwest Outdoors. We'll catch you later.